Hi guys and welcome back to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and I'm back here today with another whiskey review. Um, I've been away for a little bit, just taking a little bit of a, a break from creating some content and that. Um, just, just wanted to. Um, so the whiskey that I'm going to be looking at today is a Scotch single malt whiskey. It is not a high-end whiskey. It is not a whiskey that's going to make you fall out of your chair. It's not a 1970 Macallan. It's nothing special. Let's just get out of the way. This isn't going to be one where I sit here and just wax lyrical about the quality, the amount of time that's gone into something, yada, 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 yada. However, it is a whiskey that's pretty interesting for a different reason, all right? And I will get onto that in a minute. I hope you're all well. It's very, very cold where I am. Um, and uh, yeah, luckily we escaped the snow recently, but uh, apart from that, it's been bloody freezing. So I've got a fire in, Christmas trees up. With that in mind, I am going to be doing a series on winter drams. So I'm going to be picking out a few whiskies for me that I, I find very, very good over the winter period. Um, and it's going to have a bit of an English slant as well. You know, I like, I like my English whiskies. So uh, I've got to make it a little bit different. So the whiskey that I'm going to be looking at today is from one of my favourite distilleries. Now, I don't often fanboy over certain distilleries. Some of you will know from previous videos and just speaking to me separately. I'm a big fan of Deanston. I love Deanston. It just really speaks to me. I love the base flavours. I love the spirit style. I just love their normal choice of cast maturation, all the interesting things they do around finishes. The whiskey that I'm looking at today, however, is the polar opposite of that. It's this, the Deanston Kentucky Cask Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, right? Nice and bright, nice and red, semi-festive. It, it's just because it's red, no other reason apart from that. This has been out in the market for a couple of years now, right? Cork pop, lovely stuff. Um, the 12 year old and the virgin oak have kind of been Deanston's entry level whiskies for quite a while. Namely, the virgin oaks is usually about five quid cheaper than the 12 year old. The 12 year old is one of my top 10 all time favourite drums. It always has been, always will be, providing they keep the recipe the same. However, Deanston and their hierarchy of, of the large company realised that they were kind of missing out on a trick because that's great, you know, spending 40 quid, 45 quid or whatever on a Deanston 12. They're not hitting the demographic that they need to sell volume. And that's the thing with whiskey makers. We, we do like to romanticise alcohol factories, but they are there for selling that alcohol, otherwise they won't exist. So what the Deanston Distillery did is that they decided to introduce a whiskey that would try and move people away from things like the cheap bourbons or... That kind of thing, basically. And that's why they've gone with Kentucky Cask. It's an ex-bourbon matured whiskey. It is there to target people who mix it, usually. It is intended to be on offer, more often than not in supermarkets. And it is intended to sit on that kind of bottom, second bottom shelf of the supermarket. Not in a derogatory way, but the cheaper ones are generally sort of at the lower bit of your eye line. The ones that are on offer. So this normally retails for about 20 quid. However... Much to my anti-moral obligation that I normally have, I bought several bottles of this recently from a bald American fella who hates his employees and hates paying taxes even more. Um, he's got a few warehouses, you might have heard of it. It's named after a, a river in the, in the South American continent. Um, and he was selling this off for 12 quid, was Jeff, 12 quid. Um, it's not the Jeff you think, it's different Jeff. Jeff from down the pub, obviously. Um, but he was selling these off for 12 quid from his warehouse empire. Now, I've seen these in the past on offer for like 15, 20 quid, whatever it might may be. But for 12 quid, I just got a load of them. I got three, four, for 12 quid, like each. That's like 48 quid for four bottles of whiskey. And yeah, I know, don't get me wrong, there's the whole drink less, pay more kind of thing. I agree. However, what I'm doing with these is I'm gifting them, I'm mixing them into cocktails, and that is something we'll get onto in a minute because that is kind of what it's there to do. Now, this is bottled at 40%. It will be chill filtered. Natural colouring, I mean, it doesn't say anywhere, but it also doesn't say Mitt Farb stuff on the back. 
However, as I understand it, I don't even know if this is available in Germany, to be honest. Germans, if you're watching, please tell me. Um, so it might be natural colour. It's quite light. I mean, it's not designed to look dark, I suppose. Like a, it's, not in, it's not copying a sherry whiskey. You know, it's not like a lot of the ones on the supermarket shelf where they try and give this impression that darker equals better. This is just really there just to try and draw people's attention away from their normal bargain hunt whiskies. And that is why it's bright as well. It's bright red. You've got the blue and the white as well of the American flag, I'm presuming, hence the Kentucky thing. Um, it actually says on the front, soft filtration unpeated. So, I mean, that's again just... It's aiming at a certain demographic of, of whiskey drinkers, and that's fine. That is absolutely fine. That is what some whiskies are there to do. Um, in the Deanston Glencairn site, fittingly, because it was the only one that was clean. So 40% Deanston Kentucky cast on the nose. It's fruity. It does have some of the key Deanston flavours for me on the nose. It's got honey, it's got a little bit of cinnamon spice, it's got a little bit of green apple as well. I'd say it's a bit fresher than the 12 year old. The 12 year old really is sticky honey. It's all about that kind of lovely spiciness as well. A bit like the virgin oak cask, but obviously the Deanson 12 is a bit more rounded. You can already tell this is a bit more rough and ready. I believe from memory, I think it's made up of malts. Is it four to eight years old or four to six years old? There's even numbers in there. It's all below 10 years old. I think it might be middle in about six. I'm sure somebody told me it was like six to eight years old. Could be wrong though. Either way, it's sub 10. It's a bit of kind of, a bit of spice, a bit of pepper maybe, but not much more like a white pepper kind of thing. A bit funky. Um, it smells a bit fusty as well. But it's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be sweet. It's supposed to be a little bit spicy because again, this is supposed to be drawing you away from like, you know, you're on, on offer, Jack Daniels kind of thing. Um, and it is pretty much just gonna be made for mixing and not thinking too much about, and you're not gonna be doing a lot of thinking with this, to be honest. A bit of plasticine maybe as well. Right, on the palette. Yep, sweet. Mouthfeel's all right. It's not too bad, actually, the mouthfeel. There's a lot more spice than you might expect, certainly from the nose. It is very, very spicy on the palate, particularly if you get a nice big mouthful like I just did. Toffee, the honey again. Some of that green apple from the nose. Maybe a bit of like, what is that? What is that? It's kind of like nutty chocolate, maybe. And it's kind of, it is on the lighter side. It is on the lighter side of the flavour profile. But again, it's designed to be on the lighter side of the flavour profile. It even says on the back of the bottle, I'm read, I was just reading it then very quickly. So, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. American, American cream soda neat or mixed, enjoy in any damn way you like. And do you know what? Yeah, that should be said for any whiskey, and fair play to Deanston, you know, for saying it, and for doing this as well. This isn't aimed at people that have hundreds of bottles and troll whiskey beers or troll Scots whiskey auctions looking for random bottles of like St. Magdalene or Port Ellen or Glenary and things like that. It's designed for people that are popping down to Morrison's or Tesco, somehow like that, and they just want something to stick in the bag for a couple of whiskies and coke that night, or a couple of whiskies and ginger, and I'll tell you what, this does work really well with ginger ale, because I've tried it. I've tried a few of them, I've tried several of them. This is not my first bottle. Um, the finish, the one thing I'm not talking about is the finish, let's have another quick slug. Mm. Yeah, very approachable, very soft. The sweetness is back. The honey's back, the toffee's back. It's gr it, it grows on you. It does grow on you. It's better. It's a fucking darn sight better than 12 quid. Let's put it that way, it deserves more than 12 quid. 
but hopefully it got it got it out there a little bit more. Um, finish is medium length. It's almost kind of white winey. There's a little bit of tang. Some sweetness is underlaying it mainly. A little bit of spice. And just reading the back again, it's basically first and second Philex bourbon casks, which a lot of Deanston is, is produced in anyway, which is good. And again, I'm an ex-bourbon guy. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It may go a little cloudy, don't panic. So it's not fully chill filtered. I think I've read something about this soft filtration process at Deanston before, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, da -da -da -da. Jam packed with sweet and smooth character. I mean... Jam packs might be a bit of a strong phrase, but what I will say, so it's fair, fair play, fair play for doing it. Is it my all time top whiskey? No, is it bollocks? However, I think I'll always have one in for mixing because I prefer mixing something like that into say, again, a whiskey and ginger or even maybe like a softer whiskey sour or something like that because it is on the lighter end and it will work quite well with sort of a sour alternative it's well priced it does exactly what it's designed to do in my opinion i don't know how successful it's been probably i'll be honest probably not massively um because you don't hear too many people talk about it but i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing or that's not me slighting this in any way i think it does what it's supposed to do very very well and uh yeah fair play to them. fair play to them. if you tried it let me know again please don't go off on one saying bye 50 quid bottles instead, you'll enjoy more. Yeah, I know that. I know that. But I've got plenty of them already. I've got plenty to be getting through. And this sometimes just does the job. And that's what it's there for. So, with that in mind, thanks very much for watching. See you soon.